This experiment was inspired by something I saw on the Wikipedia entry under aluminum sulfate. If you scroll down to chemical reactions, you will see a formula that shows a reaction of aluminum sulfate with sodium bicarbonate. The products are shown to be sodium sulfate, aluminum hydroxide, and carbon dioxide. Here is the balanced equation and stoichiometry weights have been adjusted to produce 25 grams of aluminum hydroxide. Here are the actual ingredients I am using in the experiment. This alum was purchased in the spice section of a local supermarket. The ingredients are clearly listed as aluminum sulfate. Here I have pre-measured both chemicals for the reaction along with some distilled water. I take 80.8 grams of sodium bicarbonate and add it to 500 milliliters of water with a magnetic stir bar. I turn on the stirring and heat to get the sodium bicarbonate into solution. Next I add 200 milliliters of distilled water to the aluminum sulfate and uh, on the hot plate with heat and stirring. The sodium bicarbonate does not look like it is completely dissolved, so I transfer it to a larger beaker and add more water to bring the total volume up to about one liter. So after a while, it looks like all the sodium bicarbonate is in solution. Now I pour in the aluminum sulfate solution, going slowly so the reaction does not produce CO2 too quickly and cause the beaker to overflow. You see the aluminum hydroxide precipitate form instantly. Later, the reaction seems to have finished and no more CO2 bubbles are being produced. After the solution has cooled and the precipitate is settled, I set up for vacuum filtration through a coffee filter. It looks like some of the aluminum hydroxide is getting through the filter, so I stop and transfer the filter to a beaker. So I continue filtering and after a while the aluminum hydroxide seems to be acting as its own filter and not much is getting through the filter paper.
I carefully remove the filter paper from the funnel and transfer the precipitate to a glass dish. I try to recover more of the precipitate by using a cotton ball placed in the neck of a plastic funnel. I place the funnel on top of the vacuum flask even though it is not exactly an airtight fit. The vacuum still helps pull the liquid through the cotton ball. The cotton ball does not seem to be doing a good job either. So again, with my Buchner funnel, and instead of using a coffee filter, I have installed my finest lab grade filter paper in the bottom. I remove the paper from the funnel to see how much of the remaining precipitate I have recovered. I was able to recover more, but there obviously was still some that escaped the filter. I placed the dish containing the presumed aluminum hydroxide in my electric skillet and proceed to remove all of the water. After it has dried completely, I examine the results. I am wearing gloves because it is still very hot. I try and crush it to a fine powder with the bottom of a beaker, but the substance is very hard. I try something with a little more force, but it still doesn't work that well. So now I weigh my product and see how close it is to the predicted amount of 25 grams. It is way overweight, so I know something has gone wrong. At this point, I am thinking it may be heavily contaminated by the sodium sulfate produced as a byproduct in the reaction. It should be soluble and I should just be able to wash it out. Before I proceed to the washing, I perform a test using some dilute hydrochloric acid. First I test one of the initial ingredients, the aluminum sulfate. I don't expect to see any reaction. No reaction is evident with the aluminum sulfate, so I perform the same test on the presumed aluminum hydroxide precipitate. This reaction should only produce aluminum chloride and water. No gas should be produced. It looks like there is a carbonate present here.
This indicates I do not have a pure product at this time. I place my filtered precipitate in a beaker and add plenty of water to give it a wash and hopefully remove all soluble substances that may be present. I do another filtration to remove as much water as possible. I pour, <clears throat> I pour the filtrate into a beaker and set it aside for further examination later. I add all the precipitate to the funnel. I pour more water over the precipitate and give it another wash. Place the beaker containing the filtrate on the hot plate and proceed to remove all of the water. I want to see how effective the washing has been. This will reveal how much soluble substance I removed from my product. Here is the wash precipitate. Hopefully the carbonates have been removed. There was a lot of soluble substance that was removed by the washing as you can see in the beaker. I try I again dry the precipitate using the electric skillet. Meanwhile, I perform the acid test on the recovered soluble substance. The result is as you would expect if carbonate was present. Now the presumed aluminum hydroxide is dry. Well, the weight is now below the 25 grams theoretical value and is somewhat believable, but I would have expected it to be even lower given all of the losses that must have accumulated up to this point. Let's see how it reacts to some hydrochloric acid now. The release of gas is still quite vigorous, so it seems I have failed in producing clean aluminum hydroxide. If you have any ideas as to what went wrong, please leave a comment. 